Hello and a warm welcome to The Federal. I'm Neelu Vyas. Today, Congress leader Dr. Jaya Thakur moved the Supreme Court seeking an investigation into the Adani case by agencies like CBI, SFIO, SEBI, and a number of other agencies. But I think what needs to be discussed right now is yesterday's development, where the center yesterday said that they have no objection to a Supreme Court panel uh, uh, basically investigating the Adani and the Hindenburg case, provided that the center uh, fixes up the mandate of the committee and the center also gives the names of the committee members to the court in a sealed envelope. So what is going to be the end goal of this committee, if at all it is going to be formed, because the next hearing is listed for 17th February. It's an open-ended thing. We do not know right now whether the court will agree for a committee like this or not. But the questions we are raising through this program is that if at all a committee like this, which is formed with the names given of the domain experts by the center to the court, what kind of a committee will it be? What will be its end objectives? And where are we heading to as far as the Hindenburg Adani case is concerned? I'm joined by a special panel today. Manu Sharma, a Supreme Court lawyer, is joining us. Thank you, Manu, for uh, being on The Federal. Giri Prakash, who's business editor, uh, The Federal. Thank you, Giri. And I also have TK Rajlakshmi, who's deputy editor from The Frontline. Thank you, Raji. Uh, let me begin by Manu. Uh, Manu, if you have seen the story, uh, this Supreme Court monitored committee probe, which the center has agreed to, but we do not know whether the court will agree to this or not. But if at all a committee like this is formed, what do you think will be its end objective? What is going to be the goal of this committee? And why I'm asking you is because everybody is fearing that this committee could be an eyewash. Well, I think, uh, Ms. Vyas, we've become a very trust deficit society. So we start out by assuming the worst. Let's wait for the Supreme Court order. Let's see the names which are offered by the center. Uh, I'm sure uh, if it's happening under the uh, supervision and monitoring of the Supreme Court, I think the best possible uh, committee will be set up. And uh, Supreme Court will not set up a committee unless it is satisfied that there is going to be an objective analysis an examination of the allegations which the Hindenburg report supposedly uh, contains. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's not, not assume too much. Let's wait for the Supreme Court Committee to be set up and uh, then we see, see how this evolves. I'm not saying that uh, just because, uh, I will not assume that, that just because the center has uh, given names, it's going to be an eyewash. Let's let's not jump the gun. It's, it's happened in the past also. And uh, it does not, I mean, if the media starts discussing it in this manner, it doesn't paint a very good picture. Supreme Court is doing its job and it knows it. But uh, when Tushar Mehta, the Solicitor General, says that, uh, you know, the names of the domain experts have to be given in a sealed envelope because that can upset the market. Now, how credible do you think uh, in the legal framework is, how credible is this explanation really? See, uh, at the outset, uh, while Supreme Court considers whether those names will actually ultimately form, make it to the committee panel, it's it's. Uh, I think there is nothing wrong uh, in a sealed cover because the moment you know any kind of names are uh, out in the open, even before they are uh, made part of a committee, uh, all kinds of uh, statements can be made uh, by interested parties. You know, uh, opposition parties will attack them, and the ruling party will start defending them. And that that uh, is bound to adversely, uh, I won't say impact, but uh, it becomes an irritant, an irritant in the decision making of the Supreme Court. So it's mm -hmm. there is nothing wrong in giving those names. Once those names uh, are finally accepted, whichever panel is formed, I think then that will be made public, and that and that, that committee will do its job under under of course Supreme Court monitoring. Right. Uh, but Manu, what I'm a little confused about is that, uh, and I'm going to ask that question to Giri and Raji also. Uh, the thing is that when uh, the center agreed for a court monitored probe yesterday, it said that, you know, this is for strengthening the regulatory mechanism of SEBI. Uh, so it's not very clear whether it's going to investigate the Hindenburg Adani case or is going to purely talk about a general strengthening of the regulatory framework. What do you really get uh, from whatever has come out from the court yesterday? 
I think what's appeared in the media is that uh, the Honorable Chief Justice has asked the center for the scope and terms of reference. So they will formulate the scope of work of this committee. Uh, I am expecting it to be twofold. First is to strengthen the regulatory framework of short selling, which according to me is sufficiently regulated. It needs to be opened a little bit. Uh, be that as it may, the committee can revisit this point. It's been uh, under uh, debate for the last two decades. And the second will be specific to what this Hindenburg report contains and whether this requires any, any further examination by the committee. So it's going to be twofold. One, a more broad-based to protect the investor interest. And second, more on the point of this political uh, battle flashpoint that uh, there is something wrong with, with what uh, the Adani group or, of course, or it's not wrong. So it's going to be twofold. But let's see what the centers proposes as the terms of reference. Right. Uh, let me come to you, Giri, now. Uh, I was reading Tushar Mehta's uh, statement where he told the court that, you know, there should not be any adverse signal which should, I mean, given to the investors or to the, the market. And uh, because of that reason, they are saying that, you know, there should be no comment against the SEBI. But media has been raising questions as to why SEBI didn't act enough or it should have acted much before uh, this entire crisis unfolded. So I'm also told that SEBI chief apparently is reaching Delhi to meet Nirmala Sita Raman tomorrow. So what can we really expect out of tomorrow's meeting? And uh, do we really see the tightening of screws around SEBI? Uh, how does one read that? Hi. So uh, the um, there were enough signals even earlier, uh, even before the Hindenburg report uh, appeared in the press. So uh, SEBI could have actually taken uh, cognizance of that and acted upon. Uh, it didn't need a FX code to go and give them give it directives, so, uh, which obviously it didn't do. So Supreme Court uh, had to intervene and. Supreme Court keeps intervening because uh, either the regulator or the uh, various governments don't take action when they should. Mm -hmm. uh, it's become some kind of a norm now. And, uh, but I'm happy that uh, Supreme Court has intervened now and uh, has decided to ask, the, ask SEBI to do something like this. And if you look, even if you look at the Parshad Mehta case, uh, it didn't, I mean, there was no regulator at that time as uh, if I can say, within course as powerful uh, as it is now, but uh, it was a process where they finally ended up uh, taking a lot of actions and there was a JPC out there and then finally uh, it is uh, sort of uh, either bridge the gap or uh, plug the loopholes over a period of time, but sometimes uh, SEBI does not act as, as it should. So I assume this is the right thing to do to, to have done this. I mean, I, I think the Supreme Court has done the right thing. I do hope something very positive comes out of it. Uh, uh, and as Mr. Sharma was saying, uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, short selling. And I, I only thing is you need to be more careful from now onwards. <clears throat> right. But uh, Tushar Mehta also said that, you know, we have to strengthen the regulatory mechanism. Now, uh, if, if that is going to be the end goal of the committee, if at all it is formed, we would know probably on 17th. But uh, does that really absolve SEBI of all the questions which have been raised on SEBI so far, that it hasn't acted enough, it should have woken up much earlier? Uh, questions still will be asked of SEBI as to it didn't act in the right time. Yeah, so if you flip that, uh, the trip, uh, uh, the government is, or even the Supreme Court is not very sure. Uh, you know, they, they don't think the SEBI is so well regulated. And obviously, it's a, it's a commentary on SEBI. And um, SEBI should act, either it should defend itself in the FX court, uh, or they should um, say that they will voluntarily want to be a party to this case. Uh, it doesn't reflect very uh, well on SEBI uh, if uh, your government uh, says that uh, it's, I mean, they say that, I mean, if you look at it, if they say that it should be more regulated, obviously, what does it mean? If you, if you flip it, you know that it's not well regulated. It should have taken cognizance of that. 
Right. Uh, Rajalakshmi, I'll come to you with a question that, uh, you know, people are raising questions as to how objective or how impartial this committee will be when the names of the committee members will be suggested by the center. They would be, of course, the domain experts. But if the names of those experts are going to be given in a sealed cover, what kind of a pattern does it does, does it really behold, you know, for uh, for the future as well? Uh, I mean, whether it is Raphael or whether it is uh, any particular big crisis you talk about, and you know, we have these sealed covers uh, uh, coming in, you know, and handed uh, down to yeah, the court. So, thing. what kind of a message is it really sending? Well, the sealed cover has is sort of becoming a little bit you know, of a pattern. So, uh, so one, uh, so one hopes that well, something, you know, that in public interest, you know, everybody should you know get to know as to what's inside the seal cover or who are the names you know that the government uh, is interested in uh, uh, in fact both sebi as well as the government have suggested this to the court that we would rather have uh, the the expert panel suggested by us and that it should be in a seal cover and that also that the terms of reference you know or the remit would be decided by us okay so which actually does not leave much of a scope for the Supreme Court, you know, uh, sort of other than, you know, um, having some kind of a, some kind of a monitoring, uh, monitoring role in the entire business. Now, I'm I actually, I'm quite intrigued, you know, that, that this government, which was, you know, on a collision course with the Supreme Court over the collegium and, uh, and had been uh, sort of, you know, quite, quite clear that, uh, you know, suddenly it comes around and says, you know, that we will accept whatever the court says, this is a very good idea. Okay, now the court's hearing a clutch of petitions and says, okay, fine, you know, this is a serious issue and that we should, we should consider uh, this because, you know, middle class uh, investments are involved uh, and, uh, and it's a pretty sort of legitimate thing to ask uh, uh, and that, you know, uh, and that, you know, whether the regulatory bodies are functioning or whether they should be strengthened or whether they should be reviewed. These are all, you know, legit concerns, okay, the court flags. The, uh, the bench also says, that that we would not like to enter, you know, into the domain of policy decisions. Okay, mm. so it's it's it it also gives a signal to the government that look, look, we are <laughs> that we are concerned. Okay, we are concerned, and uh, but yet, you know, we would not like to step into your domain, which is also fair enough. Okay, which means mm. that 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 the onus is on the uh, on the government now. Okay, to to say or do. So it actually the courts actually. Uh, they gave a way out to the government, okay, which was sort of reluctant to constitute a JPC and also to uh, to head uh, to sort of constitute a committee, okay, uh, okay, sort of led by a judge. Now, now, now it uh, now 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 I, uh, now I feel that the government was actually sort of cornered in this entire business. Okay, the opposition sort of had gained, uh, had sort of you know taken a lead in this uh, in the attack on. Uh, you know, on the report in Parliament and also outside, and and, uh, and for the entire fortnight, Nilu, there was nothing but this. You know, it was not so much uh, so much the budgetary allocation which was sort of discussed. Of course, it was, but but at the same time, the entire focus of the opposition was you know constitute a JPC. Okay, there was in fact nothing else you know other than that. Okay, so I think that the government felt that the next half of the budget session would also be devoted to that, and here we have the Supreme Court it actually offers a way out. It says, you know, it said that we should have a we should have a committee. So the government said, yes, yes, why not have a committee? Excellent idea, you know. So it was like uh, it was like the solutions almost offered on a platter to it. Now, now I wouldn't like to read too much on why, why, why did and and how these things sort of pan out, but but it's quite clear that that it gives uh, I think sufficient time for the government to you know it buys time, you know, essentially. No, now, now, do you think, do yeah. you think that? If a court monitored probe, uh, if the Supreme Court agrees to, and Centre already has agreed, so in a way that has taken the wind uh, out of the opposition sail because they had been insisting for a JPC from day one, and if yeah. now there is a court monitored probe, so what will the opposition be left with? Well, well, I think that that they can still insist on on the fact that uh, that a JPC should be constituted because because it's public money, uh, okay, which is involved. It's not about just to, uh, about strengthening, you know, the regulatory system. Okay, we know that the regulatory system has failed. Okay, so so it can be strengthened. Yes, it should be strengthened. I mean, ideally, it should be done. But but then but then, if your terms of uh, terms of reference are not about the 
short selling itself you know which, mm. which 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 is a main claim in the report and right. about uh, and about a particular firm then then obviously the no amount the, then the expert committee is rendered sort of redundant and who are uh, see even in the jpc you know it's quite clear that the majority of the members are going to be from the ruling dispensation okay it's not that it's not that they're not but then you know because parliament is accountable to the people you know you know so more than a committee constituted by uh, uh, you know by the supreme court whose whose members are going to be offered to it by the government that you know, that you know seal cover as and when the government will decide to tell the tell the country uh, who are the people in this committee i mean there is a, there's a lot of gray here i would say you know i don't think this is exactly working in a very transparent fashion Really. No, no, and that there is a certain gray area, and which is why we are discussing this. Let me come to Giri, and then I'll come to Manu. Giri, uh, there is a feeling that you know, uh, if there is a, if there is a JPC, I mean, just to avoid the JPC, probably a court-monitored probe is being brought in. Uh, what do you really feel about this, uh, this whole thing? That can there be two parallel investigations by a JPC and also by a court-monitored probe? What do you feel? Can that happen? Oh, why not? It can happen. I mean, uh, one is a legislature, another is the uh, one is a judiciary, and uh, another is a legislature, and uh, it can actually happen. But but then it all depends on the willingness of the government to go ahead and uh, be as transparent as possible. I mean, that's the key uh, key key word here. You know, transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important for the government to not only just uh, come up with these kind of remarks, but it it's also the, it should also go ahead and make itself uh, open to this kind of uh, um, probe or investigation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it can go ahead and do it, but the fact that they are not going ahead and doing it, and then, uh, uh, as Rajakshmi said, that they are taking uh, advantage of what the Supreme Court is offering them on a platter. But you see, the point is the government uh, you, should you realize really it, has bigger, it, has oh. a, it has a bigger kind of... Uh, um, but the center agreeing uh, role to play. To ask, but the center agreeing to a court monitored probe. Do you see some kind of a, a flexibility on the part of the government, or it's a flexibility which is going to be suited uh, to their position of perhaps what they want? Sorry, I didn't understand that question. Uh, I'm I, saying when that, you say flexibility, I'm saying that the center agreeing to a court monitored probe. Do you see this uh -huh. as? flexibility on the part of the government or a flexibility which suits more the government? I think the latter is uh, true as of now. Hmm. But if we were to have a JPC as well, then it sort of uh, gives a very clear indication that the government is very serious about this. Hmm. And uh, I assume that uh, they should also do something like this because there is a lot of criticism against the government. And, and I think this is the best possible manner to do it. Right. But Giri, there is another question. I mean, people are asking, even opposition parties have said that if supposing this court monitored probe is instituted, will it probe Adani or will it probe Hindenburg? That's that's another view, which is uh, no, 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 coming no, up. No, 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 that's not, uh, no, uh, it's, it's a very general kind of an umbrella kind of uh, situation here. It's not just uh, Adani or Hindenburg or any of them. The whole idea is to strengthen the entire system to an extent that uh, in future, if something goes wrong, there there will be uh, enough parameters to uh, regulate it, uh, and and it and it it gets done uh, uh, without any kind of uh, prompt by any any agency or the government. Right. Uh, Manu, but when we talk about a probe or when we talk about uh, strengthening the regulatory mechanism, so in this particular case, especially the post uh, Hinden Hindenburg research report, so what would they really strengthen? Because questions were raised of RBI, questions were raised of SEBI. So when we talk about strengthening of the regulatory mechanism, is it going to be strengthening of SEBI or RBI? Or is it, if it's going to be an umbrella investigation, it looks like what Giri was saying. So does it talk about all the enforcement agencies? Like there is another petition filed today by Dr. Jaya Thakur, who is a Congress Mahila Mocha leader. And she says, you know, that she's sought a direction from the court that there should be an investigation by other agencies as well, like CBDT, CBI, SFIO. So does it really widen the scope uh, of uh, the investigation? Or will it just remain restricted to SEBI or RBI? 
I think the field is open and uh, we should await the hearing which is now scheduled on 17th. As I said that uh, what has been reported so far is that the terms of the reference will take a final shape. It will first be proposed by the government and then a judge no less than the Honorable Chief Justice of India will agree or disagree with it. So I think it's early days and I, I mean I disagree uh, with my friend Mr. Giri here that Supreme Court offered it on a platter and the central government lapped it up. I, I think let's just uh, trust, trust yeah. the uh, the institution and uh, you if you go back a, a, day, a little more than a decade a uh, same thing was playing out uh, with respect to the 2g scam you know for supreme court monitored uh, at that time i remember jpc was also uh, set up and uh, then a retired supreme court judge also came up with his report evidence was taken in all these uh, i got into it ed got into it and what turned out was a complete damn squib nothing happened in fact india internationally was painted in a bad light for this overzealous uh, attempt at, you know, targeting corporates and assuming that there is some, kind of, you know, the government, whoever is ruling is running some kind of a scam. So let, that's what I'm saying. You know, it's early days. Let's wait. Uh, right now, it's all, all, all so vague that, you know, nothing merits any kind of definitive uh, uh, order as far as investigation. So as you said, it's going to be a broad-based inquiry. Also, also in addition to that, if anything worth investigating into uh, that particular business group is there, I'm sure the Supreme Court will take will take measures to go into that aspect also. But right now, to add, start attributing motives and you know that the judiciary and the government are in are and in glove, that's unfair. On uh, according to me, it's very very unfair at this point of time. Let's trust okay. the. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So from what Manu is saying, uh, I would like to come to you, Raj Lakshmi, that, you know, yeah. uh, again, I mean, as journalists, we keep raising questions on all issues and we start doubting each and everything. It's quite natural to raise questions, you know, but uh, supposing if this <clears throat> court monitor probe gets instituted with we, which we know that probably the terms of reference would be instituted by the, by the government names would be given by the domain experts, but still we do not know whether the court will agree or not. Uh, do you see the possibility that, you know, where the court might just disagree or you see that, you know, there is a possibility where both can come along and, you know, uh, looking at the larger interest of the investors and the market and the international image of India? I don't know, Nilu, what is more important, uh, the interests of, you know, the national, uh, uh, you know, the global image of India or the or you know the public money that that has gone into all this you know i think uh, i think in public interest uh, there should be a fair and a proper probe into this entire thing because it's not just it's, it's not just a question of some private people you know uh, sort, of, uh, you know, sort of putting capital and using and and sort of making those kind of predictions uh, in the you know the market it's about it's about public money as i said you know sbi you know your public sector banks are involved you have lic you have lic investors uh, which are many and uh, i mean i think huge amount of middle class investors so i think uh, i think from that point of view uh, it does assume a certain certain amount of importance and significance you know and um, and, and 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 i think you know it's quite uh, it's quite legit to ask to ask us to how did the government you know suddenly agree to this I mean, I mean, I'm not, I'm not making any sort of imputations, okay? But the coincidence is something that we, we that's, can that's ask, and we wonder at least, at least a little yeah. bit, at least uh, to indulge in it a little bit, not exactly make make any make any long drawn you know assumptions, uh, you know, in that sense. But but as I said, you know, uh, it's a, I I think the issue is important enough, you know, and and it needs a proper because because again, this whole seal cover business. You know, I can't understand, you know, if, if you're so clear, he can, we'll do it. You know, I mean, I mean, come on, you know, India's image is all there. You know, you want to have, you, you want to have cow hug, you know, on Valentine, that itself, that itself <laughs> those things harm India's image more. I mean, you know, exactly. doing, doing no, a but, but survey, I'm, IT I'm survey really on the BBC, tempted to ask one question. Oh, Manu, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, what you, what you just mentioned about seal cover. Manu, can I just ask you that, why can Supreme Court not... Uh, uh, I mean, completely discourage this business of uh, giving sealed covers. Whenever there is a sealed cover given to the court, people start doubting and suspecting, oh, there could be some kind of a friendship or an alliance between the government and the court. Why can't the court really discourage this? They can outrightly say that, no, look, uh, there's going to be no sealed cover business at all. You know, it, it's already happened. If you remember uh, when P. Chidambaram was uh, pressing his bail before the Supreme Court, 
uh, the agencies, ED and CBI also try to pass on a sealed cover with some evidence which they wanted used against to oppose his bail. And the Supreme Court at that time had deprecated that practice. So Supreme Court is, is conscious of the fact that anything that is entering the adjudicatory mechanism, anything that can get a court to make up its mind one way or the other ought not to be in a sealed cover, more so when it's affecting somebody's liberty. But here, you know, it's the situation is a little different. It's akin to appointing someone who is going to carry out uh, something very heavy duty on his shoulders in, in terms of stepping in as an expert and finding out facts and regulatory lapses both. Uh, the situation here is that anyone proposed by the government will suddenly come under attack. So I think, uh, as I said earlier, when if Supreme Court chooses to go ahead with the names which are there in that sealed envelope, I think at that point of time, it will be out in the open and uh, it will also be shared with the other party and, and everyone who's affected. Uh, I don't know who are all uh, party to this proceeding and everyone will be a chance and opportunity to... No, because, you know, I, I was reading Tushar Mehta's statement and he has very clearly said that names should not be disclosed and opposed by the petitioners and the court can choose from the list. This is what I'm, I'm quoting Tushar Mehta. So he has said, I mean, I mean, he's holding the brief for the government. He will make a statement as as as, as definitive as that. But uh, the court will do its own analysis. Court is free. I mean, court is free to appoint someone completely out of that sealed envelope. Right. So that field is still open, and uh, court will do its analysis about the uh, the wisdom, the capability, the qualification, and the expertise which those gentlemen will bring to the table who are either in the sealed cover or not. So let's await. And I mean, I mean, if I go and appear for the government, I also I'll also make the same statement. But court may or may not yeah, accept. So anyone appearing for a side will put forward a, a strong case for that. Yeah. Uh, so one last question, uh, Giri, to you, that uh, once this uh, court monitor probe is instituted, people have been waiting for a transparent probe into this entire Hindenburg Adani saga, which has just happened and unfolded. People want to know a lot of things, but how transparent will this committee be? Will it do justice to the kind of crisis which has unfolded before the world, I would say, not only India? Uh, I think I think it should uh, it should do go ahead and be as transparent as possible, and um, uh, and the fact that Supreme Court has intervened and uh, and it, it's 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 a huge uh, boost uh, to 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 whatever that the whatever the people are saying you know and perceptions do matter and and, and at the end of the day I, I do believe that uh, it's. Uh, uh, the fact that Supreme Court has intervened itself goes to show how serious the situation is, and uh, and I'm sure it will be as transparent as possible. And um, uh, and as Mr. Sharma said, that there is a lot of trust deficit out there. So uh, let's not look at uh, it in a very negative manner. Uh, let us let us hope that it is as transparent. I I and let us hope that uh, Sebi is armed with more powers. I think that's something that. Uh, and it it's, it also gets far more funding. It has a bigger budget so that it can actually hire professionals and, and pay them accordingly. And so that that is one of the reasons. That's one of the areas where uh, that is something that is not happening as now as of now. But yeah, can this completely be, restore it's not, it's, the? It's not just it's not just uh, Stevi. It could be DGCA. It could be any of the regulatory uh, regulatory authorities. They Absolutely. should not just be armed with a lot of responsibilities and rights, but they should also get that kind of a budget so that they can hire professionals, pay them as per uh, their experience, and only then uh, and give them enough independence and uh, uh, and allow them to be as neutral as possible. So uh, that is something that the government should do voluntarily. But you agree that uh, the image of India's regulatory framework has taken a beating especially after this case, when we talk about SEBI, uh, though Tushar Mehta has very clearly said that we don't want to give out a message that, you know, SEBI is not capable of handling a, a crisis like this. But uh, don't you think that it, the image of SEBI has taken a beating? And I would say, I mean, the larger regulatory framework, isn't it cracking down somewhere? 
the credibility. See, um, I, I have uh, I have one kind of, I mean, I'm, let me tell you this. You know, it's happened in the US. It's happened in Europe. It's happened in stock markets across the world. And people have learned from it and uh, strengthened their uh, regulatory mechanism. And each of them has has its own story. You, you can't really transplant whatever that has happened in the US and, and, and then fit it into an Indian environment. It's just not possible. And it's, it should not be done as well. We have our own learnings and we don't commit mistakes. We should have whatever we should have done, we should have done. We didn't do it. But now let's go ahead and do something very positive about it and see that uh, we don't commit these kind of mistakes. And uh, the fact that it took uh, Hindenburg report to tell Sabi that uh, they should be um, wide awake and they should do these things is, is in a very positive way. It's a very good thing. Absolutely. So let's wait and watch and hope for the best without any kind of uh, trust deficit, as Manu mentioned. Thank you so much, uh, Manu Sharma, DK Rajalakshmi, Giri Thank Prakash. You. It is wonderful to have you, all of you, on the program. And stay tuned to The Federal for more and more political stuff. Thank you. Subscribe to The Federal's YouTube page for more interesting updates.